So in this video, we're gonna talk about how we can use free SketchUp extensions in order to model some longer complex, like hallways and other things like that in SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Um, and I apologize in advance, I had my wisdom teeth out last week, so I think I'm pretty much not swollen anymore, but I can't really tell. So it looked like there was some bruising on some work calls yesterday, but I'm trying to work around it because I don't really wanna stop. So um, what I wanted to do is, what, what I'm interested in is I wanna create kind of a long curve like hallway shape and so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to um, use the arc tool in order to create just kind of a long curving shape I don't want to get like too crazy with it um, I'm imagining like like either like a museum corridor or something like that that just kind of has a long corridor to it so something that's kind of like long but it also has some ups and downs and so what I want to do is I just want to take all of these and I just want to use the offset tool in order to offset this in a little bit and I'm not ultra worried about the final shape it's more of like a concept type thing and so what I want to do is I want to take this and I'm just gonna draw a line across here like this like this so something like this just kind of a longer more organic shape and so what I want to do is I want to take that and I want to move it up and down like it's kind of a roof um, that kind of like you know how like those longer corridors in some of those areas can do kind of an up and down type thing that's what I want to do with this model and so I'm gonna do this in kind of an iterative process so that if something blows up on us we can come back and work on it later but um, what I want to do first is what you could try is you could try using sandbox tools in order to try to do this using the smooth tool so you can see how you can mouse over this and you could adjust your radius to something like 50 feet so you pick up a little bit more of it and you could try to move this up and down but the problem with that and I mean it, it definitely works but what happens is you start getting all this like edges and other things like that um, in here just because this is this is made up of a ton of different segments and what it's doing is it's pulling on the geometry in here and it's making it so that uh, you've got all this like nasty um, nasty geometric issues basically and so what we want to do instead is we want to get some geometry that's a little bit better to work with and so usually what I like to do when I'm looking for some better geometry is I like to take a shape like this and I like to delete out the face and then I like to use the free extension soap skin and bubble which I will link to in the notes down below and so when we do that so when we use soap skin and bubble what that's going to allow us to do is that's going to allow us to create geometry in here with a grid so it uses math to kind of figure out what this grid is and in this case i'm going to go to the maximum which is 30 and so what that's going to do is that's going to divide this up into a grid and while the geometry isn't perfect like you you'd ideally want to see like total quad geometry in here but that's not really how we modeled this and I don't think you need that um, in order to do what we want to do here but now we can take that whole thing and I'm just gonna make another copy of it and we can use the sandbox tools on that and so the cool thing about when we use sandbox tools on that and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna reverse my faces on this one but the cool thing about this is now if we use sandbox tools in order to move this up and down and I don't know why it does this but we want to jump over to the select tool I'm just gonna take this whole thing and use the smooth tool on it well notice how now instead of getting that nasty tearing that we were getting before over here um, this works a lot better right you can see how now um, our geometry kind of moves up and down um, it kind of merges together and that's just because there's this intermediate geometry in here that uh, really kind of works together as opposed to over here where it's just kind of like splitting it up based on all the edges inside of this object but now what we want to do is we want to take the whole thing and we want to thicken this so and we're starting to deal with some kind of like weird organic shapes in here right but what we want to do is we want to take this whole thing and we want to give it some thickness and so the best way to give it some thickness um in my opinion so there's a few different ways you can do this there's a great video out there somewhere where somebody uses shape bender to bend something along a path i'm going to be a little bit more organic with it and i'm going to use the free extension joint push pull um by the way i will link to all of those in the notes down below but what i want to do is I want to activate joint push pull and I want to thicken the surface and there's two tools that we could use in order to do this so the first is the actual joint push pull tool itself and what that's gonna allow us to do is that's gonna allow us to take this whole thing and give us some thickness so I would select my surface and remember that joint push pull is gonna let us push pull a curved surface 
And probably one thing I should have noted is you want to go ahead and you want to save this um, before you start push-pulling all of this, just in case something goes wrong. And so what joint push-pull is going to do is it's going to let us push-pull all of these surfaces at once. And um, the reason this is such a powerful extension is because what it does is it'll automatically kind of fill in the geometry between those two surfaces, assuming you've selected the thicken option right here. If I click on this, notice that this did do a pretty decent job of thickening my geometry, but it's a little bit weird in the sense that like some of the directions are a little bit odd and it's just not like a true like up and down thickening, which isn't really realistic to the way you might build something like this, like not that you'd necessarily build something exactly like this. But um, what we might do instead is we might go into our second option and we're going to use the tool vector push-pull. And so what vector push-pull does is vector push-pull allows us to actually push-pull in a direction. So um, instead of push-pulling based on the direction of the faces that are in here, which is what joint push-pull does, what this is going to do instead is this is going to allow us to dictate a direction. So in this case, for example, I could dictate that we only want to push pull this on the Z axis. And so when we push pull this on the Z axis, notice what that's going to do. So that's going to push pull this whole thing and it's going to push pull it straight down like this. So because it push pulls it straight down, you get a much like truer look in here. I don't know why this is jumping around the way that it is. But if we look at this, you can see how you got a much better result using that vector push pull right here than we did right here with the joint push pull. So it's just going to be a better tool for something like this. All right, and so now I've got this kind of like roof surface in here, right? Well, the next thing I want to do is I want to create some geometry that actually works for the walls, but I'm going to use the extension tools on surface from Fredo 6. So, and what that tool does is it allows you to draw on complex surfaces. Well, not only is it going to let you draw on complex surfaces, the other thing it's going to do is it's also going to let you offset complex faces on surfaces as well. So when we activate this, what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to mouse over these edges like this and notice how it's picking up on edges that we could offset. Well, in this case, what I want to do is I want to offset this surface inside. So I'm going to click here, I'm going to move my mouse over, and I'm going to offset it this way like this. And so notice how, however, that's going to be really hard for me to pick up this geometry um, because I would have to go through and click on it over and over again. Um, there's not really an easy way around that that I'm aware of. So I'm going to undo that. And what we want to do instead is we actually want to pick up the offset on surface tool again, but this time we want to make sure that we click on generate in a common group. So what that's going to do is that's going to take our edges that we generate. So we want to mouse over this and pick this whole thing. And I'm going to offset this inside. And we can say that we want to offset this in maybe like 12 inches and hit the enter key. But what that's going to do is that's going to generate those edges in a group. So now I've got these edges in here like this. And so now what I want to do is I want to take these edges that I've offset and I want to use soap, skin, and bubble on them again. So in this case, I'm just going to generate a soap skin with those edges selected. And I want to type in a value of 30 again for a subdivision. But remember, when I hit the enter key, what that's going to do is that's going to take that surface right here. And that's actually going to take it and conform it to those edges. So if I was to copy that, you can see how it's going to look something like this. And so now we can use joint push pull on this in order to generate some perimeter walls around this. So in this situation, for example, we would just go back to our vector push pull. So we would select vector. And um, a lot of you have asked about this. So there's a tool in here called project the shape on a plane. So I did a video a long time ago about creating a, um, a landscape that moves up and down and then you can push pull and thicken it and slice it. Um, as soon as I made that video, Fredo updated this so that it uh, automatically shows less options. And so the tool I used for that, which is called project the shape on a plane, um, got hidden. So if you want to see that tool, you can just click on the right arrows right here and you can activate this. But what we want to do is instead of push pulling this so that it's down like this, notice how when we do that, we've got all this crazy up and down, right? Well, we don't necessarily want that. What we want is for this to project this on a flat plane. So we're just going to take this and select the option for project the shape on a plane. Well, notice how when we do that, what this does is this takes this and it push pulls it down, but then it makes it flat right here. And there's a lot of cool things you could do with that. But in this case, we're just going to click 
on the checkbox right here. So that's how you might start with a shape like this in order to get kind of that organic roof, but then kind of a straight up and down like architectural glass. So um, you could apply this to a lot of different things, but what I wanna hear from you in the comments down below, do you like this format where I'm on the screen more, where I just kind of like do something that I find interesting? I just love talking to you guys in the comments down below. Um, I can link to some tutorials about these tools as well if you wanna learn more about them. As always though, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.